we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at the touch at, at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Praise the yes. Lord. Loving Father, we thank you and praise you, Father. As we begin this session of prayer, Lord, we ask you to open our spiritual eyes, our hearts, and so that we will have a divine encounter with you, Lord, and we will experience the joy that you came to give us, Lord. As, this, as it is written, we are writing this, that our joy may be complete. We believe that each and every one of us would have this joy, this eternal joy that, you, that comes from your word, Lord. And we believe all this is possible through the Holy Spirit, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. Holy Spirit, take control of our life. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Just read that once again, sister. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life that was made manifest and we saw it and testified to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you may have fellowship with us and fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing this that our joy may be complete. Today, a Christian's life is, a life should be filled with joy. And that is what is missing in all of us. And that is what uh, uh, we see John telling us, explaining to us, I'm writing to you. Imagine, while we're listening to it yourself, you feel the power. He's trying to explain to you, this is the same thing that we have seen, we moved, we have touched, we have experienced that. And I want all of you to experience that same joy he says. And that's why I'm writing this to you. Just read that, Jessica, once again. As you read that, read the scriptures. We were, we were sharing the other day about uh, that experience about St. Thomas coming to India. Just listening to those things, we were so much anointed and we were, we were enriched with the word of God. How much more when John himself was seen, he says, I have seen, we have touched, we have had an experience with it. This is the thing, the message that we are speaking to you right now. Read that once again. Sister. Yeah. We declare to you what ah. was from the beginning, mm. what, we have, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with what happened? Can you this life was revealed we have seen it and testified to it and declared to the eternal life was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may have ship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that joy may be complete. Amen. Yeah, so the, the, the desire Can of God... Can you hear me, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So the desire of God is that our joy should be complete. Complete. And that is what uh, we see John speaking to us through this letter. And that is what we are writing to you, that your, our joy may be complete. That means your joy should be complete. If you, if you see the two subjects that uh, John is speaking about, life and fellowship. 
is telling is is explaining to us we have seen the one who had fellowship with the father that is jesus continually and we have seen him we have touched him we have experienced his love and today he wants you and me if you have that fellowship then you will have fellowship with god or the father and then they will have a deeper relationship with your brother and sister this is that is the most important thing today we are not able to have a fellowship with our brother and sister and that's why he says unless you get connected to god unless you think what we have seen what we have touched we have experienced we are explaining to you and that is what he is telling us if you read in the same uh, john chapter 1 verse 2 1 2 and 3 Which one, brother? One same, John. same. Yeah, chapter two. One John, two, two and three. Mm. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin, and not for ours only. One number one number one first. Two oh. one. John chapter one John two. No, you said oh, two one. Two one. My little My children. My little children. Ah. My little children. I'm writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. but if any one does sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sin and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world uh, three also now by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments mm whoever Next says whoever says i have come to know him but does not obey his commandment is a liar and in such a person the truth does not exist but whoever yes. obey his word truly in this person the love of god has reached perfection by this we may be sure that we are in him yeah so yeah think- what what is uh, john trying to tell us he is telling you my little children i am writing this to you so that you may not sin may not sin he says sin will separate you from the love of god See, sin is so dangerous. People take sin very, 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 very lightly. He says, "Who will, uh, as a mother, as a father, you will not uh, like to see your children uh, who's having so much of sickness in the body, and you still say, 'I love you, my child. I love you, my child.' See, here it says, sin will not take you. I mean, uh, sickness will not take you to hell. Uh, to hell, but sin will take you to hell." and that is what god is trying to tell us do not sin do not sin that's why jesus hates sin he loves sinners so sin will make you guilty sin will not allow you to grow sin will blind you sin will not be able to enjoy the presence of god to have the complete joy you should always be in the presence of god that's what he's trying to tell us today see and then he says if you sin if you say don't get worried sir if you sin there we have an advocate run to the advocate the father through jesus christ the righteous person so he is giving us the confidence that even if we sin do not live in that instantly go to him confess your sin because you know what sin will do to you sin is so poisonous see uh, a person who have aids that aids will not if we we nobody will live with that aids immediately you will try you might hide it but you will try to go and get it uh, he uh, get that sickness out of your body but sin we are playing with sin we are we are compromising on sin and we justify ourselves in so many ways and we do not accept what the word, word of god says so sin is so important that that's why god says you know he has already paid the price for us and said even if you have sin we have a righteous judge an advocate who is with us so he, and the best part is the advocate is on, is on our side he is ready to forgive us that's why and and this we may be sure that we know if we keep his commandments and what is his command his commandments are is because he loves us so much he loves us he says he, he all through the bible jesus is trying to tell us how he loves us he shows at the love of a father a mother even if your father or mother forsakes you i will not forsake you imagine god is trying to tell us but still 
we are you know we are like children we are not grown up so we are stubborn we want to do our own will we we see that that is what god is trying to teach us today if you see if we take the example of a little child a child a two year old child one year old child a two year old child what the child will do that child will do things which the child does not understand for example if you see a, a child who, gra- who grabs a knife a sharp knife in the hand and that knife uh, she will that child will hold on to that knife and will not leave it the mother will come and try to pull that out for her even if it is to stop the child to take it away because the mother knows the danger of that knife but the child doesn't understand the child will cry and yell thinking oh what a mother this is I, i i like this knife so much it is shining and is so looking so attractive to me the same way that is what god is trying to tell us sin sin will destroy your life that's why he is trying to tell you my little children do not sin i am telling you do not sin but you are taking you are taking a deaf ear to that you are not bothered about that and it's it's okay he is talking to the the believers not to the unbelievers the unbelievers who do not know christ if they do not know about sin but you and me who have tasted the love of god who knows what god loves we we always say uh, what pleases god if we don't faith it is impossible to please god so whatever pleases god we must we must try to do it and now we cannot have an excuse and say uh, uh, we can't do it no we cannot say anything in the bible that we can't do because he has given us the helper if i am not able to do it i am not using the helper i am not getting help from the helper so if i don't get help from the help i am trying to do things on my own my own knowledge my own pride my own thing that will destroy me but when i have this help of the holy spirit the holy spirit will lead guide and protect me and everything that the holy spirit does it will glorify the name of the lord so 100% i need to depend on the holy spirit and many of us we never do that only in times of trouble only when we need something which we cannot do on our own we come to the holy spirit here the bible tells us that the lord will lead us continually that means the holy spirit is ready to lead us continually continually a proud person will not listen a proud person will try to do things on his own and that is what the devil will try to put that in you he will try oh you can do this thing you can manage it you can do that any time you 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 can do these things because uh, god is with you he says god is with you no that is a lie we need to recognize the holy spirit we need to recognize that we are weak we need to recognize that without the help of the holy spirit we can do so many things but it won't please god what we need to do is what pleases god and that is important and that we unless you are having that fellowship he says unless you having fellowship with the father then only you will be able to have fellowship with man and that fellowship it will go deeper and deeper and that is what is telling you my dear little children do not sin he says sin is the cause of everything when you allow sin to enter your life today many people fall into sin they do not recognize they are living in sin and if you are in sin you will continue to be like that way you will be stagnant it's like a, a pool of water that is stagnant you see a lot of worms and mosquitoes and thing it will be a stinking their lives will be the same way and they're not bothered whereas bible says out of the believers are should flow rivers of living water that is how god looks at us that our lives should be a life of blessing not only for us for the whole family for the whole nation and that is what god wants us to be he wants us to know that we are his children and that's why he is telling you he is telling you my little children we we have seen no when jesus comes how we will be we will be just like him and that is why we are pressing on we are every day we are purifying ourselves we need to purify ourselves we need to know what sin will do to us and that's why we need to be very cautious we should be alert and ready and that's why that's why every person who has the holy spirit immediately if there is a wrong teaching if anything if if you are speaking anything against christ the signal will go up because in your spirit you are you are very very clear because the holy spirit is with you and he will show you and he will teach you all things and that is what we need to know that god is with us and the only thing when we compromise on sin 
automatically we would be we would be less sensitive to the holy spirit and when when we commit sin when sin is going on we will compromise and we will not be alert so that is what uh, say john is trying to tell us my dear children i i am writing to you this letter do not sin sin is so 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 dangerous that can destroy you if we look at the same uh, uh, one 1 john chapter 5 towards the end of the scripture it says verse 20 hey brother uh, same one john chapter 1 uh, verse 5 5 verse 5 chapter 5 verse 20 1 john 5 and we know that the son of god has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son jesus christ he is the true god and eternal life hmm 31 also little children keep yourselves from idols yeah so he says see this is very important he says because we you, you understand and know him who is true and we are in him who is true in the son jesus christ this is the true god and eternal life see that what is this true god what is eternal life eternal life is knowing the one and only true god having a fellowship with him having a deeper relationship with him and he says that's why he says be careful little children uh, keep yourself from idols if you uh, if you love the things which is more than god if you love anything more than god that becomes an idol your wife your daughter your family your husband anything that you love becomes an idol that's why we have to be careful he says keep yourself from idol because the devil's work is to, to to shift your love from god and his word to something else he wants to compromise he said that's not a sin you can do that when you do that what happens you're not allowing the presence of god you're not enjoying the fullness of god you're not able to keep the joy that god gave you and me eternal the eternal joy that is in you and that is what we we that's how the devil works his tricks uh you know he does things which which will blind you when you're not sensitive to the spirit when you're not obedient to god's word when you don't acknowledge him in all your ways this is what happens so that's why we have to be very very careful you sir if you read the same thing in 1 john 2 26 one john 2 26 i write these things to you concerning ah. those who would deceive you ah 27 also as for you the anointing that you received from him abides in you and so you do not need anyone to teach you but this but as it is anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you abide in him yeah so he says and uh, verse 28 also yeah and now little children abide in him so that when he is revealed we may have confidence and not be put to shame before him as his coming yeah see it's it is a very very powerful verse first he says i write this to you about those who would deceive you the deceiver will deceive you that's why we have to be very careful in these last days you can get deceived so even a person who's preaching the word of god can deceive you and they're teaching you the truth so you have to be careful but the anointing which you received from me and from him abides in you and you have no need that any one should teach you as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and 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 is no lie just as it taught you abide in him so every believer every christian who has been anointed he says you don't need anybody to teach you the greatest teacher is in you you should acknowledge him you should experience him you should know he is with you all the time i might come and teach you for a half an hour something and go away but the the greatest counselor the greatest helper the the uh, the uh, he is your god he is your refuge he is your strength he is everything to you and he is your helper he is your counselor he will teach you all things you go to him 
I might teach you a little while, but you have the, the, the Holy Spirit with you all the time to teach you any scripture you do not know, anything you don't need to run to man, come to him, he says, you don't need anybody to teach you. Even, even the last days, things are happening around you. You don't need to worry because the Holy Spirit is with you. He says he will reveal to you the things that are going to take place even beforehand. John 16, 13. You will not get cut red-handed. You, wherever you are, you will experience God's power. Even if you're sleeping, the Holy Spirit will wake you up. Come. The, uh, the Lord is coming. Your creator, your, 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 the one who loves you is coming to meet you. So that is the confidence that you and me could have. And that is what St. Paul is trying to tell us. If you read the other verses, and now little children... Uh, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. See, when Jesus comes the second time, there will be two types of people. And this is, they're not, we are not talking about uh, thing. we are talking about believers. See, that means it's from this verse it says, and now little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may not, we may have confidence. We'll have confidence to greet him and not shrink not shrink from him in shame at his coming. Why will you shrink from him in shame when he comes? When you're not doing it according to God's plan. If you're not glorifying God, he, in the, the motive, God will expose the motive. Why did you do it? Why were you preaching? What you were doing it? If I'm doing my motive was just to get fame and name or earn money or do something, I will shrink with shame because I will not have the confidence but if I'm doing it for the will of God, if I'm doing it for the glory of God, I will be waiting. Yes, Lord, I'm ready to meet you when he comes. And that's what he says. And now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from his shame. Shrink in shame at his coming. Who will shrink with shame when he comes? Because everything will be exposed. Everything will be exposed. If you look at the, the same scripture, uh, 1 John 2 18 to 18. Read that, sir. 1 John 2, 18. Yeah. Children, it is the be it is the last hour, as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come from this. We know that it is the last hour. Ah, can you? They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But by going out, they made it plain that none of them belonged to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I write to you so not because... What? Not uh, no, if you, if you see what he says uh, in verse 18... Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. So he says, uh, what it is we know who is Antichrist. Anything that you speak against Christ, you become Antichrist. See, he says, they, they went out from us, but they were not of us. So if, if you, a person who belongs to Antichrist, we will not look to him uh, uh, as, as a, a believer or something like, you know. Here he says, they deceive, they come and deceive you. So they went out from us, but they were not of us. But if they have been with us, they would have continued with us. So they were in the meetings where the, uh, John was there. And why they went away? Because they could not stand in the presence of God. Their sins were exposed. Everything was exposed. And that's why they left. And see, they were the people who had Bibles. They knew the scriptures. And they, they, they came and deceived people. And that is what it says. When, where, because we know John's uh, messages were so powerful. He says, he, he called the people. If you, if you say you love God and you don't love your brother or sister, you're a liar. Imagine if I'm sitting there and if I'm doing that and that will expose my sin because I'm coming and exposing to people that I love God, whereas I'm not able to love my brother, my sister at home. 
all that i could not stand there i move away from there and that is what they were with us and they went out with us he says if they had to continue with us but they went out that is that it might be plain that they were not of us if you are not of god you will not stay because his messages was so powerful and he, that's why he continued on love 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 you see he is telling you and he knows what will destroy that love is sin and that is what is a sin was being exposed and that is what the, the people left at that moment all those who, who were anti christ again if you see in matthew's gospel chapter 7 was 12 in everything do to others as you would have them to do to you for this is the law and the prophets this is the most important thing he says now you we always do you want people to insult you no then you don't insult others so this is the standard rule that god tells us you see what you want others to do to you so Read that again, says seven Matthew seven twelve. In everything, do to others as you would have them have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Is it, that is the whole Bible? It says so. Whatever you wish that men would do to you, do so that do do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So he says that is what you need to do as a Christian, as a believer, as a child of God. we need to do that and you will not be able to do that if if sin is in in your body if you are holding on to sin again if you see uh, 1 corinthians 16 19 and 20 and 1 corinthians 16 6 9 6 19 and 20 6 or do Sorry. you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit within you mm. you have from god and that you are not your own for you were brought with a price therefore glorify god in your body yeah see he says we, we need to remind us that do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit within you which you have been from god you are not your own you were bought with a price and what is the price that god paid for you and me his precious blood his blood not ordinary blood his precious blood so we were bought with a price so glorify god in your body so we need to glorify god every day every minute of our life and that is what the devil knows if you allow sin what will happen to your body you will not be able to glorify god and your joy will not be complete so it it all depends on us that's why the, the bible tells us in psalm 16 11 you show me the path of life and in your presence there is fullness of joy so it's so easy to come into his presence because where you don't you know the your body is the temple of the holy spirit and where is the spirit dwelling in you when you repent when you commit sin when you confess your sin and you come into the presence of god you start to praise him and thank him and glorify him you're coming into his presence now in his presence there is fullness of joy and his right hand happiness forever so 24/7 you can be in his presence because now we are the living temples and that is what god wants us he wants this joy to be complete he wants us to have our mind stayed on god and his word and that's why we keep confessing i have the mind of christ and the wisdom of god formed within him i i, I keep reminding myself who am i i am a child of god i am the living temple and whatever i do the name of the lord should be glorified now when i do that what happens the path of the righteous becomes brighter and brighter like the dawn of day now life becomes so easy now we understand why god is trying to tell us all these instructions as we are just sharing with you a little child will not understand when you pull out the knife only when the child grows up and you tell the child you know at the age of 2 the same knife you you pulled it in your hand what would happen why word 
I never knew what it is. The same way God wants us to grow up, He doesn't want us to be children. He wants us to understand what sin will do to you. Sin will destroy your life. Sin will not allow you to experience joy. Sin will not allow you to grow spiritually. Sin will not allow you to love God and love yourself. And that is what we need to be very, very, very careful. And that's why uh, John was so harsh that people left his meeting. Imagine who will want to leave a meeting where a 95-year-old man who is speaking about God's love, he is leaving, he's ready to depart. And these last words are, he's telling you, my dear children, my dear son, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, he's talking to you, do not sin, do not love this world. If you love this world, what will happen to you? If you read this the last scripture, 1 John uh, 2, 15, it is 14 and 15, it says the same Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, I read. I write to you, children, because you uh, know the Father. I write which one, to sister? you, Father. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, continue, sister. One John continue. two fourteen, brother. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, correct. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know whom, who is from the beginning. I mm. write to you, young people, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you, and mm. you have overcome the evil one. Mm. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desire are passing away. But those who do the will of God live forever. So it's very clearly. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes, brother. Ah. So, it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the, eye, the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So, it says, the lust, what is this? Wanting your own way. You want to do your own way. Wanting everything you see. Wanting to appear important before others. This is the work of Satan. He, he deceives you. And that is what it says. If you, if you have the love, if you love the world, what the world does, it squeezes out the love of the Father. Without your knowledge, you do not know. The love of the Father will be squeezed out. That's why he's telling you, do not love the world. Everything in the world God has given to you is to enjoy, but don't love it. Love comes, the only person you need to give love is God and God alone. He says, you don't love the world or the things of this world. So he's trying to tell you very clearly, if you want your joy to be complete, you need to love the Father. And that is the basics we know. We all know it. We are not able to practice it. And now it, it becomes easy when we surrender and submit, accept our faults, confess our sins, come to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you are the one who's leading me. I want to have an experience, a divine encounter with God. And not today, only one day, all the days of my life. Now, uh, I understand it, it, is, it is this temple. Now, for example, uh, if you see somebody comes and buys my house, my house is on sale. And I, they come and give a good price and buy the house. And now they want to occupy the house. They come here and I say, no, 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 no. And they said, we have already paid the price. I need to come and take control of it. It is the same God is telling you and me now. I have paid the price for you on the cross. I have bought you the price. Now I want to take control of your life. I want love, streams of love to flow through you and me. And God, I want my joy to be in you complete. But you're saying, no, 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 no. 
Yeah, I, I, and I need time. I need, I need, uh, so I put so many restrictions. I, I, I can't understand God's word. So I don't allow it. And that's why we are living a substandard life. So it's time we say, Lord, I give you my whole self. I give you my whole body, Lord. I know you are. I was bought for the price. And right now, I want this joy to be complete. I want your name to be magnified and glorified, Lord. Nothing of me, everything of you, Lord. I surrender and submit to you. And let it not be only today, but every minute of my life. As St. Paul says, if I live, I live for the Lord. If I die, I die for the Lord. Whether I live or die, I belong to God. So that is the purpose when we know who made you, God made you. Why did he make you? To know him, to love him and serve him. Am I doing it right now? And that's why we have to be careful. That's what St. Paul, uh, John is telling us. Be careful of sin. I'm writing this letter to you. Do not sin, he says. Do not love this world, he's telling you. He's telling us for his own good, for our own good. And now we can do that 100% when we allow the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to have fellowship with the Father, to have that eternal life fellowship, knowing the one and only true God. John 17, 3 says, eternal life is knowing the one and only true God, knowing how much God loves us, knowing the price that he paid for us now, knowing the calling that we are being called. And now we can have that eternal joy all the days of our life. And now we will be not only a blessing to our family, but to the whole nation. We thank you, Father, for giving us this wonderful grace to know you in an intimate way, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be vigilant. And as, as John says, do not sin, my dear children, do not sin. Help us, Lord. And even if we sin, we have an advocate who's ready to forgive us, to fight our battle, to, uh, to pray. As it says, you know, 1 John 2, 2, Jesus has already paid the price for us and help us to recognize that we need the cleansing of the precious blood of Jesus. He said in 1 John 1, 9, if we walk in the light, in 1 John 1, 7 to 9, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We believe, Lord, we have been all cleansed so that we could have an intimate relationship with you, not only today, all the days of our life. And when you come back, we will not shrink with shame. When you come, we would be ready to meet you, Lord, because everything will be exposed. If I'm doing it for the for 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 what the motive is in a different way, not for the glory of God, not to build the kingdom of God, it will be exposed. Help us Lord, to have the right motive so that when you come, your second coming, we would not shrink with shame, but we would be rejoicing, waiting when our Lord will come. Thank you and praise you, Father. Help us, Lord. We can do this only through the help of the Holy Spirit. So every day, so that whatever we do, we would magnify and glorify your name. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.